Chapter 49, Crohn's disease and genetics. And this is specific training for the inflammatory bowel disease sensor. And this is where you find it here in the gastrointestinal sensor package, the IBD sensor. And it, has, uh, it helps you in early diagnosis and treatment, less in prevention. So it's really, uh, if you're ready, uh, if you've developed it, you have severe problems, it might help you in early diagnosis and when you have the disease, it will help you improve treatment. Now Crohn's disease is a difficult topic. It's not very well understood yet. We do know that there are genetic factors that increase your risk of developing the disease significantly. So we know about those and we can do a genetic test for them. We also know that smoking, especially in combination with genetic variations, increases the risk significantly. Um, some scientists or some studies hint at uh, that excessive animal protein might be also a risk factor that increases the risk. It might also be that certain bacteria in the gut are causing this problem. And there's also the two hygienic uh, hypothesis that uh, being brought up in a too in hygienic environment compared to our ancestors, which were, uh, which were living out of doors, uh, that this might be one cause of the inflammatory bowel disease. So for now, we know genetic predisposition is a, is a specific factor, so damaged genes that you're inheriting as well as smoking. Um, now, when a person has symptoms and goes to a doctor and um, you get the right diagnosis of Crohn's disease, when the first symptoms arise, then usually it is possible to to have treatment with medication as well as modified diet and that will often help people not to require surgery where damaged parts of the intestine are, uh, are surgically removed. So if early detection is possible in this case it often uh, improves the outcome of not needing surgery. If you, if you have symptoms for one year before you get the right diagnosis then in most cases surgery is already necessary. So early detection is very important for, for people with this disease. And these are the genes that cause an increased risk. And this is actually a cutout from a report. Uh, this is the NOD2 gene and we analyze three different genetic variations. In case this doesn't mean anything to you, um, check out the training for, um, for simple disease risk statistics. They will explain to you uh, what all of this means. Uh, basically, 1% of the population has the TT genotype at 2.52 fold risk, so almost three times higher risk of developing the disease. Um, combined with this genetic variation, 3.9 fold increased risk, and this is actually the, the toughest variation. If you have two Cs at this position, you have a 15 fold increased risk. And this is the science behind it in case you're interested. Um, so we do the genetic test and we find out do you have normal risk or a, uh, extremely increased risk. And the first part um, helps you if you have an increased risk for early, uh, with early detection. We tell you what the symptoms are in, in this program. You will detect the symptoms immediately when they develop and uh, it will help you go to your doctor and get immediate treatment. That's the first step. And the second part is better treatment. Um, there is the pharmacogenetics um, training that I would recommend, the pharmacosensor, and this is part of this. We do test the genes that are breaking down certain drugs, and then we can tell you this drug is likely to be broken down too slow, you need less of it, it might cause a side effects or it might not work at all. So let's look at early detection. First, you should pay attention to the symptoms. You will find out what the symptoms are in the report, it's very easy. Um, it tells you definitely not to smoke if you have an increased risk and you should eat less animal protein because it's a likely link. And um, by following these, you will be able to uh, slightly reduce the likelihood of the disease, but more importantly, it will help you diagnose it in time and get immediate treatment. Um, also, Crohn's disease usually comes in phases, so you have a phase of lots of problems and then, uh, then a phase of it being better again. And we can help you modify your diet to eat certain types of food during the, the more intense phases to help you combat this, the symptoms better. 
So this is what, what the first stage um, uh, in the program will help you with. So early detection and best possible prevention and then uh, better treatment. And please do watch the pharmacogenetics training of the pharmacosensor. Uh, what I explained there is that certain drugs are metabolized by certain enzymes. And if this drug is used for, uh, for Crohn's disease and the enzyme is not breaking it down and I take this drug regularly, then the amount of the drug is increasing constantly and then causes problems. Um, so through testing the genes, we can then create a list of, of drugs and here this is a normal result so this drug is broken down normally and the dose is normal but it might not be broken down at all and then you should uh, use uh, an alternative drug or you will see that the recommended daily dose is modified. So this will help you optimize your drug treatment and uh, combat the drug, uh, the disease more effectively. So really this is more uh, a focus of early detection and better treatment, less in prevention because we just don't know scientifically yet how to prevent the disease uh, most effectively. So this is the training for the inflammatory bowel disease center that helps you get better treatment and early detection for Crohn's disease.